answer to 1984 is 1776. I've been aware of Porter Stansberry's incredible research for many years. The Wall Street Journal uh, has said that yeah, he's among some of the most uh, astute researchers and uh, people that can forecast what's coming in the economy. Barron's called his uh, work a dire prophecy when he predicted with total precision uh, years before what was going to happen with uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, GM, General Growth Properties, the biggest mall owner, and a whole other laundry list. And now he's making his biggest breakdown or, or, or prediction yet. He's saying in the next 12 months or so uh, that they believe that there's something going to happen that is going to basically end what we know as America. And, of course, that's dollar devaluation, the end of the dollar as the world reserve currency. Now, some of my connections to oil company execs and others, they're saying 2012. But regardless, this information is key. And we're going to be going over it with him until five minutes in the next hour. Then Lindsey Williams with that information that completely couples and 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 uh, uh, dovetails with everything Porter Stansberry is talking about will join us for part two of that record-rated uh, show yesterday. I mean, it just blew everybody away. Uh, our servers had smoke coming out of them. And we've got an extra record audience today just on the downside of that. Uh, so people are really responding. They're really starting to listen. And uh, this is extremely powerful information. Uh, but we want everybody to go to End of America, the number three dot com. That's End of America, the number three dot com. If you want to see all the incredible daily reports, the free video uh, that breaks all this down, where he goes through all the graphs, all the documents. And if you've already seen it, send End of America, the number three dot com to everybody you know so that they can be warned. Because knowing this is coming is one of the only ways we can brace for the crash landing. Every economist we talk to says, we had Mark Faber on two days ago, and that guy was on the board of dozens of Fortune 500 companies. He said, it's guaranteed total collapse, but he's saying, you know, it, 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 it could be longer in the future. And, 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 and mirrors what Porter Stansberry is saying, but Stansberry gets in even more detail. You know, the point is, we're crashing, but at least we can warn people to brace themselves. And I tell the story about and I'll, then I'll go to Porter, uh, it was probably seven years ago, I was visiting family in Fredericksburg, Texas, in my Tahoe, and thank God that there were so many family going out there that my dad and I just rode in the Tahoe, uh, my wife and uh, my mother and my two children at the time rode in her Passat, and they, about 30 minutes before, my uncle's looking off the mountaintop that he lived on at the time, and he said, uh, the hilltop, he said, you better leave, those storms look bad, he went in and looked on the internet, and tornadoes were forming, you know, 20 miles away. So my wife and everybody, my grandma too, they all left 30 minutes before us. I stayed to shoot some more guns, drink some more coffee. Uh, and uh, driving home, we got blown off the road by a tornado. We didn't know it was a tornado. When the state police got there, they said, you know, up the road, a tornado just blew, you know, blew down some barns and houses. And we drove into Johnson City. Power lights were out. Cars were turned over. But I'm driving, I'm going about 55, it's raining. Boom, tornado comes through, throws me off down a 50-foot embankment. We're, we're spinning, but it's like when time slows down, and then we start shooting backwards down the gully. And I told my dad, I said, brace for impact. We're in seatbelts. He braces. We slam into it, and it crushes the Tahoe. All the, It was one of the big Tahoes from the, the back all the way into the back seats. Both of our seats break Back in the impact, my dad got a concussion and started vomiting a few hours later. I was okay. But the point is, I said brace for impact. And I, and I think that it really helped us. Now, I'm done with the analogy, but ladies and gentlemen, the tornado, we don't, a lot of people don't know it's coming. Stansbury's saying, tornado's right there. He's predicting it's going to hit us on the road. Take evasive action. Porter, is that a good way to put it? Yeah, I think that's exactly right, because as you said, you've had economists after economists on your show. There's really no doubt at all about what the consequences of what the Federal Reserve is doing to our money will be. The only question is when. And, you know, reasonable people can have differences of opinion about that, because as you know, uh, predictions are difficult, especially about the future. So th there isn't any question at all that there's a tornado down the road. The only question is, how hard is it going to hit us? How far is it going to throw us? And what I'm telling people is uh, you want to err on the side of caution. And, you know, I, I, I was on two and a half months ago, and I told everybody at that time, look, food prices are going to go to the moon right now. And as you know, that's exactly what's happened. And that spawned revolutions in Tunisia and Egypt and demonstrations in Iran. And all these things are part of...
part and parcel of the same problem. And they're going to get a lot worse. And the folks who, who think that these problems aren't going to ricochet back into America, they're deceiving themselves. You know, the union demonstrations that are just getting started are only going to be the first wave of this. Well, I remember what you were on two and a half months ago or so. I've been begging to get you back. You're so busy, you haven't been able to. And I know you know you got family stuff coming up. Your wife getting ready to have a baby. Was that okay to say? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're excited about uh, our second son. But I've been begging you to come back on the show, and we're so honored because of all the people we've interviewed, you really have laid it out, I'd have to say, the most accurate. We can re-air that interview right now. People would think it was today. You said it's going to cause riots. It's going to cause destabilization. It's going to come here, and it's going to start sooner than these other economists are saying. And I'd say that's the difference with you. They like to hedge their bet and claim two years, three years. You're saying no the next 12 months. Yeah. Um, I was saying in November that food prices would double the next six months. They pretty much already have. Um, I'm saying that uh, gold and silver prices are going to go up by at least 50 percent. They're well on their way. I'm saying that uh, there is going to be no improvement to it, uh, the employment problem whatsoever. And I'm saying that there will be at least two major state bankruptcies in the next 12 months. All of this is related to the same issue. And the issue is blindingly simple. There were there were tons and tons and tons of bad loans that were made during the the, uh, the 2000s in the housing industry and also to, to corporations. Those bad debts have never been written off. They were transferred from people like Bear Stearns and Lehman into the U.S. Treasury. That, that's that's all. That's a matter of fact, it's been widely reported. All that bad debt is now being papered over by the Federal Reserve, which admits to creating at least $2 trillion worth of new money to paper over those bad debts. Well, that $2 trillion worth of new money isn't going to disappear. It's causing huge dislocations right now in the market for food and energy. And later, it's going to cause huge dislocations and, and other monetary instruments like gold and silver and, and other kinds of debts. And, of course, all of this problem is going to destroy our currency going to make it impossible for the federal government to finance its ongoing debts. And you're seeing that right now at the state level, where state governments are literally going bankrupt. Well, Porter, going through the numbers, though, going through uh, you know, the details for people, and then what you think they can do to protect themselves, I mean, break that down for us. It's really very, very simple. The first thing that you have to do is you have to figure out how uh, vulnerable you are to a government default. Okay, look, the value of the dollar is going to fall by at least 50% over the next 12, 18 months. There's no doubt about that, okay? So your standard of living is going to collapse unless you're able to either, one, greatly increase your wages, or two, greatly increase the value of your assets. So you got to buy things that are going to be resistant to inflation, things like gold, things like silver, things like farmland. Secondly, I'm urging people to build up a strategic stockpile of things like critical medicines, things like food and water. Now, I know this sounds a little crazy. I understand that, and I'm not an alarmist. You can look at all my newsletters. They're all published on my website, stansburyresearch.com. Everything I've ever written for the last 15 years is posted there. I have never made a prediction like this before. I'm not the guy who says the sky is falling. Okay, the sky is falling tomorrow. Okay, the sky is falling next week. Okay, the, guy, the sky is falling next month. I'm not that person. I'm saying to you, look at the facts. Two trillion dollars of new money has been created in the last 18 months. There, there is runaway debt formation at the federal level. There is runaway municipal debt at the state and local level that cannot be financed. We are in the middle of a crisis. People keep asking me, when's the crisis going to start? And I'm telling you, it's here right now. How many banks are going to have to fail before you are going to realize something's wrong with the economy? How many states are going to go have to go bankrupt? How high is unemployment going to have to get? How high does the price of gold and silver have to go before you realize, man, it's not safe to hold the dollar? And the reason I tell people about the strategic reserve that I want them to build in their homes is because when the state government employees all walk out on strike, and they will, okay, you're not going to be able to send your kids to school. You may not be able to use the highways. You may not be able to go to the grocery stores. We don't know what the impact of all these things is. By the way, you said that on the show several months ago and have been writing about it in the last year. Half the schools shut down in Detroit, but it's not just Detroit. Uh, Oakland, California, the police chief announced 20, no, 30 plus crimes, including robbery, that they are not going to respond to now. Sheriff's departments laying off over 60 percent. I see these reports pouring in right now. Yeah, again, you know, um, 
you don't want to be you don't you don't want you don't want your city or your hometown or your state to be the first place that experiences really bad um, uh, re- uh, revolt. But it's going to happen. I mean, there's a Democrat today in Massachusetts who's telling the unions it's time to get a little bit bloody. Yeah, that's in the Associated Press. He's saying yeah. he's saying blood is good. Sometimes it's good to get bloody. These are the people blaming conservatives and in the fetters uh, when that liberal uh, uh, drug addict uh, shot the Congresswoman Giffords. They're the ones saying our free speech putting out financial information is causing violence. They attack Ron Paul and myself on CNN and MSNBC blaming us for no reason. But meanwhile, the Democrats are running around and Obama's saying, you know, they bring a knife, we bring a gun. The Democrats are saying, let's get bloody. They're going to turn their little commies loose on us. Yeah, and let me let me bring something else up, Alex. I mean, I, I don't I don't like to draw a lot of attention to you know the the safety issues that I personally have because it just makes the problem worse. But you wouldn't believe the things that have been mailed to me, sent to me, dropped off at my office, threatening me and my family. People believe that because I'm saying there's a problem, that I am the one causing the problem. That is insane. <laughs> I did not print the money. I did not make all the bad loans. I did not prevent the banks from filing for bankruptcy, which is what they should have done. I'm just trying to warn people about this problem. And uh, these other guys are, are, are they're, you're right, they're going to incite violence, and it's going to be a big mess. Well, we know what the globalists always do. They, they create the crisis, and they turn loose the unwashed, dumbed-down masses to rape and rob and pillage and, and, and engage in thuggery against the middle class. Porter Stansbury is our guest. We'll talk more about what's unfolding now, not coming, starting to unfold. Okay, going right back to Porter Stansbury. The website you want to check out is endofamerica3.com. The headline on Drudge is from CNBC. U.S. crude oil crosses the $100 mark. Brent tops 110 So you see where the futures are going. Uh, they're going straight up because of dollar devaluation and triggering unrest because people don't have enough food. And I want to get Porter's take specifically on what's happening in the Middle East, now spreading to Europe, Asia, and the United States. But here's the Hill newspaper headline, Democratic lawmaker on labor protest. Get a little bloody when necessary. So there they are calling for insurrection because these people are working for the globalists. They're working for Obama. And then they tell us that we're the violent ones and Porter Stansbury is getting threats. I get threats constantly uh, because the establishment wants to continue to position themselves to make record profits for the big banks, siphoning the money off for themselves uh, while keeping everybody else in the dark. Correct, Porter? You're absolutely right about that, Alex. Uh, you know, there are two ways to handle an excess of debt in your economy. You can, you can no longer afford your debts. You've got two choices. You can declare bankruptcy and make your creditors take a haircut, right? That would have involved shutting down the banks and having the people who, who were depositors in those banks take big losses. Or you can do the dishonest thing which is to print up a bunch of money and allow and, and, and manipulate interest rates to allow, in effect, banks to, to be the recipients of huge amounts of new inflation, which is exactly what they have done. And the result is that poor people from around the world can't, can't afford food anymore because, Alex, as you understand, food everywhere in the world is priced in dollars, and so is oil. And those are the two things that people need the most, the fastest. They need food and they need energy. And in so, third world countries, as you know, on average, more than half of their paycheck is spent on food and energy. That's right. So the first thing that happens when you have a huge inflation is food and energy prices go bananas, and then you get the resulting unrest. And all that stuff will lead to other prices soaring as well. Because as these emerging markets fall apart, all the stuff that we're used to importing cheaply is going to go way up. In and price. it destroys confidence for investment. Absolutely. And of course, now you're going to see, you're going to see the Fed, you'll see Bernanke say, oh, I had nothing to do with this. This isn't my fault. These are, these are internal political problems for these other countries. It's all a bunch of garbage. The reason why all this stuff is happening is because of food and energy prices. And I have to tell you, Alex, most people think, oh, this will be the end of it. This is just the beginning. The Fed cannot stop printing money because there is no other way to finance our debts. People don't understand this. We've never had trillion-dollar deficits before. I mean, those, those are outrageous numbers. And not, only, not only that, but we keep having them. There was one in 2009. There was one in 2010. There's going to be one in 2011 and in 2012. There is, no, there is no one, not a Republican, not a Democrat, no one who's talking about running a balanced budget. A month there's after it. they announced that they want $100 trillion additional in QE2 at Davos, 
They've now announced that they want a hundred trillion on top of it. QE three. I mean, uh, this is this is insane. It is not going to stop. The number is going to get bigger because once you go down this path of running constantly larger deficits, the only way to finance them is with inflation. And that's how I knew, going back as early as 2006, 2007, that this was going to happen. And if you read my back, my, my, my old newsletters, you'll see this is not a new prediction for me. It's simply the time when the inflation is erupting. We're going to go to break in a moment, long segment coming up, but I wanted to play the new TV ad uh, and people can go to Stansbury Media on the YouTube channel uh, and watch it, or you can watch CNN and many other channels and see it. If you're a radio listener, PrisonPlanet.tv viewers obviously can, uh, can watch it right now. But here's the new Stansbury Research uh, national ad. You may recognize the voice. U.S. citizen is predicting that in 2011, we will witness the most important day in America in more than 50 years. He says it will change everything about our lives. The way you shop, travel, invest, educate your children, and even how you take care of your health and your own family. Now, this man has made some outrageous predictions over the years, but here's the thing. He's usually right. You see, he predicted the collapse of GM. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and America's biggest mall owner, in fact, Barron's, called his work a dire prophecy. Recently, he created a video, which you can watch online for free, detailing his biggest and most important prediction yet, and it's a real eye-opener. I can't stress this enough. You should at least watch this free video online today. He explains everything you need to know, including simple steps you can take to protect yourself. You can watch it for free right now by going to endofamerica2.com. Again, that's endofamerica, the number 2.com. Or end of America number three dot com, or just end of America dot com, or Stansbury Research dot com. Uh, we're going to go to break because we're out of time here. But when we come back, uh, Porter, tell us uh, why you approached uh, yours truly to be the uh, national voice of Stansbury Research. Uh, uh, just briefly, I want to say though, I'm honored because I believe in the message you're putting out. Well, you know, I think that you're one of the most uh, credible analysts in the media. You're one of the few people who take uh, what's happening seriously. You're, you're a great spokesman for us. Well, uh, I totally agree with your information, and that's why I'm honored to be working with you. We'll be right back with Porter Stansberry to get into real detail about what's currently happening and what is going to unfold and how he sees these brush fires spreading. You know, Porter, you were bringing up uh, the fact that you're getting threats to you and your family. We get them all the time, little veiled things like, how are you and your family doing? I hope your children do well. Better shut up. Uh, I mean, is that similar to what you're getting? Yeah, you know, it's the anonymous letters in the mail that are, you know, vaguely threatening, uh, you know, printing out stuff from the Internet, sending it to me at my home, that kind of thing. It's it's uh, it's childish. Um, but somebody like you, that only makes you work harder, doesn't it? I, you know, I, I don't know how in the world you think something like that's going to make me be quiet. <laughs> I mean, you know, I want you to know, Alex, that, you know, we've, I've never spent any money advertising on television, ever. As you know, it's expensive. It's hard to do. But... Uh, but also, you know, it wasn't ever worth the investment to me. But uh, this was big enough. This, these ideas are, 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 I'm so sincere about them, and I am so legitimately concerned about them that I went ahead and spent the money. And you, you played the television ad uh, a, a moment ago on the radio. But did you know that none of the four major networks would broadcast it? Not one of them. Not even Fox. Instead, we had to go to the satellite uh, networks in order to get the placements. We, we couldn't buy directly from the networks. They wouldn't sell to us. And for those that don't understand how advertising works, you can't get their ad block times. You can only get the satellite companies that are limited uh, who overlay some of their ads as part of their deals to carry uh, the, the transmission on satellite, correct? Hey, that's right. That's, I mean, I, I, I'm not the expert on it, but that's apparently what our, our brokers had to do for us. And, I mean, there's nothing in that ad. You just played it. There's nothing offensive whatsoever. It just is a clear warning. I'm just telling people, look, at the very least, see a free video. Educate yourself. I mean, <laughs> how could that possibly be thought of as being, um, you know, uh, in any way offensive or um, – or you know, violating any kind of community standards, it doesn't make any sense. But let me just let me just reiterate something you talk a lot about. There is no doubt in my mind that none of the large institutions in the United States, whether it's corporate cor corporate entities or whether it's uh, government entities, nobody wants the American public to understand how paper money works and how the impact of this new wave of inflation is going to impact the everyday regular person. They don't want that information out there. Because 
because as long as you, the average person, don't understand it, they have a huge advantage over you. Well, here's an example. Ron Paul, two years in a row, wins the key CPAC straw poll. He's hammering this paper money versus you know gold-silver issue and the inflation tax that he hammered in, in the 2007-2008 campaign. And almost none of the media would even report that he'd won. And Fox superimposed imposed and admitted to it later, said it was a mistake fake boos from a year before at another event over Ron Paul to claim he got booed. I mean, they are not just scared of your info or my info. They're scared of anybody that tells the truth. Yeah, they definitely don't. They don't want the uh, they do not want the average person to be empowered. They want you to be enslaved by debt. They want you to be, you know, uh, manacled to uh, the paper money system. They don't want you to escape or be free. Porter, this censored uh, ad that they're trying to keep from airing on the main transmissions uh, on ABC, CBS, NBC, you name it, Fox, CNN. Um, uh, what's the best website? I know I'm just throwing this at you, uh, but uh, what's the, I mean, folks can obviously go to Stansbury Media, search that term on YouTube and find your official channel. But uh, what's the best website? StansburyResearch.com, EndofAmerica3.com. I mean, I know you have the long video on EndofAmerica3.com, but where can they find the actual TV ad? I would recommend that everybody first go to endofamerica3.com. Okay, go there first, because that's the important thing. My, the future of my TV ad is small potatoes compared to the information that you're going to get from my long video about the impact of this company. The TV ad's just pushing them to the real video. The, the TV ad is just for entertainment. It's just to get your attention, to get you to go look at this information. Go to endofamerica3.com. Whether you buy my newsletter or not doesn't matter. My newsletter is only $49. It's not a lot of money. But that doesn't even matter. At the very least, understand what's going to happen and understand the basic ways to protect yourself. The gold, the silver, um, having some basic uh, strategic stockpiles. If you can invest in a farm, like not, not, not buy a farm, but you know, invest in a farm co-op, something like that. Those things are going to really help you and your family deal with the crisis that's coming. Hey, Porter, I don't just talk the talk. I walk the walk. I have just evacuated to the countryside. I I'm gone. I'm out of Austin. Good for you. Good for you. I think you and your family are going to be much safer out there. Absolutely. Uh, now, now in the time we've got left, about 25 minutes here, Porter, you've got the floor. I've, I've got a million questions here, but get into what you predicted now, what's unfolding, how you see those cascading dominoes, uh, you know, how you see this unraveling. Well, let me, let me tell you this. Yesterday was the first day when the markets around the world finally woke up to the extent of these problems. I don't know if you notice this or not, but, you know, stocks fell sharply yesterday, right? Yes. So the one thing that I would tell people is if I don't, you don't like my style, you don't like my advertising, okay, that's fine. You, you think I'm wrong about the, these ideas? Okay, well, we'll see. But one way to judge what I'm saying objectively is to look at the recommended portfolio in my newsletter. I've got about... 15 different investment positions that I recommend people take, okay? And yesterday, my portfolio went up, okay? The markets fell by 2 3%. My stocks went up. How, if I'm, if I'm right, I'm, I'm, if I'm, the only way that can happen is if I'm right about these ideas. And there's no doubt in my mind that I am dead right about these ideas. As you know, you've been following my predictions for a long time. And at first, believe me, people were laughing at this kind of stuff. They're not laughing anymore. And, and you really only have a little bit of time left to try to get out of the dollar and to try to protect yourself financially from what's going to come. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. And we see oil rocketing past uh, $100, 110 on the foreign exchanges, gold and silver going ballistic right now, uh, and the riots intensifying, and the main driver is the food. The, the main driver right now is the food. And listen, the food is going to upset pretty much every emerging market in the world. And let me be the first to say this on record with you, okay? Pakistan is going to fall. Pakistan is going to end up in a civil war this year in the next six months. Why? Pakistan is the world's largest importer of wheat. They are incredibly dependent upon the value of the dollar from the subsidies they get from the U.S. government. Their regime will fall, and that is going to have enormous consequences for the, the, our national security and for that area strategically. Okay, That'll happen for sure this year. So, I mean, the, the, these problems are not going to go away. They're going to get worse. And you, they've got nuclear weapons. They do have nuclear weapons. The next thing that's going to happen, okay, after the, the 
food prices have soared, and the emerging markets all around the world have had these, these, this unrest and these problems. The next thing that's going to happen is energy prices, okay? Oil is going to keep rising. And if it's food prices that cause the problem in emerging markets, it is energy pr- prices that will cause the problems in the developed markets. Soaring energy prices are going to cause massive, massive unrest, particularly in Western Europe, where the government's budgets have already been stretched to the point of breaking. So look for energy prices to be the things that cause the big problems in the developed countries this year. Porter, uh, you mentioned the situation in Pakistan. Uh, The king of Saudi Arabia, I'm looking for the article, I had it here earlier, I believe it says $23 billion dollars. Uh, that he's going to pump out to the population. They're admitting it's because they're based in dollars. You know, their currency is based in it, and their prices are going up with a, a, a large portion of the population on welfare. The same thing, uh, the U.S. government uh, has announced, along with the EU, in fact, here's the headline, U.S. EU prepares to buy off post-revolution governments with billions in aid. Uh, they're desperately, because of the hyperinflation that they uh, have, have triggered, understand that this is happening so they're there pumping more fiat currency out which then only exacerbates the problem of the buying power so it may stave things off for a little while but studying Weimar Republic, Zimbabwe, Argentina, I know you've studied it, explain to people how this thing telescopes uh, towards the end it always accelerates. That's exactly right Alex, it always accelerates and the reason why it's really simple to understand if you know how interest works. So you borrow a lot of money, and then you can't afford the interest, so you have to borrow still more money to pay the interest. Well, now your debt grows bigger, and it pyramids, and you've got it exactly right. So what happens is sooner or later these debts come to a size where the only way to manage them is by printing, and that is the stage that we are at right now. It's simply math. Alex, uh, the, the total domestic savings in the United States is around $600 billion a year, okay? We're running a $1.5, $1.6 trillion deficit, which means we're a trillion dollars more or less in the hole every year. we got to borrow from somebody. Now, for years and years and years, we were borrowing from the Chinese. They have begun to sell their treasuries, which means they're not buying new debt issues. The only way we can finance these debts is by printing, and that is exactly what is happening. And the ramifications of that printing is what's causing the unrest right now in the the emerging markets, particularly in the Middle East, where there's a huge... Food shortage, but that is going to trigger soaring energy prices, and that is going to—that is what will cause the problems in the U.S. You think the unions are upset right now? Well, wait until gasoline costs five dollars or six dollars or ten dollars at the pump. Then you're going to see some upset unions if they're willing to get bloody over over uh, you know some health care benefit things where they have to start paying five and six percent of their health care costs. Imagine what they're going to do when they can't put gas in their trucks. It's unbelievable. Briefly getting back to censorship, uh, the system doesn't want your ads on national TV. Uh, The government, uh, we just saw it in Egypt, uh, decrying the shutoff of the Internet, the decrying of the shutoff of the Internet in Libya, uh, which is legitimate uh, to decry that. But then Obama and the federal government are now trial ballooning, saying, yeah, we got a bill where we can shut off the Internet or redirect any websites we want to government messages. Uh, the, the federal government's accelerating, seizing, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of websites a week now. Two weeks ago, they grabbed 84,000 innocent websites and put a Homeland Security message up that they were involved in child porn. Turned out it was a mistake, but they're really now coming out in the open. Jay Rockefeller talking about the Internet kill switch and cybersecurity, how there's going to be a cyber attack, and they'll have to shut the web down when that happens. Of course, they'll launch the cyber attack and then use that as the pretext to shut it down. I mean, they we need to get this information out now because as this unfolds, you better believe, folks, if it gets as bad as it could, uh, you, I mean, it's in the cards that they're going to shut this radio show off, and you're not going to be able to get to Stansberry.com. I think we should take out from the weapons arsenal today the Google bomb. I just have the idea. We're going to do it. Folks, let's make it number one. It'll take about three hours to do it. Put it in Google over and over again. One word. End of America, the number three. Not the numeral, not spelled out, just three. Endofamerica3.com. 
Let's cram it down their throat and let them know while the web is still there, we're going to use it. Endofamerica3.com, so folks will see that free video. Endofamerica, the number 3.com. That's torpedo number one, fired. Endofamerica, number 3.com. Let's have the number two search term. We've had the top five before in a row. Let's launch endgamemovie.com so folks can then go see how the globalists have actually planned all this endgamemovie.com guys double check that url that's a backup for what is the endgame.com but i think i think that's probably harder to remember than endgamemovie.com uh, but so let's check on that in fact i can just do it right now endgamemovie.com we just put that in i got so many websites uh endgamemovie. okay it's it's endgame the movie Oh, it's Endgame The Movie. Okay, correction, folks. Uh, correction. EndgameTheMovie.com. EndgameTheMovie.com. The film is free. Shows the globalist own statements of how they plan to wreck society, post-industrial world, by getting you in debt. They, they want to use making you poor uh, to turn us all into the unwashed masses, like the poor folks in the third world, so that we can't resist. Endgame movie or, or in game i'm gonna try it again th th three times the charm in game i just thought of this just now in game the movie.com one word put in google over and over again in game the movie.com in game the movie.com and end of america the number three dot com let's send them both to the top ladies and gentlemen and see how the globalists like it porter your comment on the open announcements that they want to have fairness doctrine for talk radio that oh we need to shut up and not criticize the government or we cause violence that we need internet two to come in that we need an internet kill switch well listen all i can tell you is that believe it or not right now we have subpoenas at my company by the Social Security Administration. Why in the world would the Social Security Administration be sending me subpoenas? And the answer to that is because I published a report that showed people how they could get more benefits out of Social Security. So I told people how they could, how they could start getting at 62 and then raise the level of their benefits when they turn 65. It was completely illegal. It was a secret loophole that only insiders in Washington knew about. I published a whole report about it, and, the re and so now, in retribution, the, the Social Security Administration is coming after me, telling me that I don't have the right to print the words Social Security. That I'm not making this up. This is a lawsuit that's going on right now with my business. Well, that's a thought crime that you've committed, Porter Stansbury. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, some of the things that have happened to me as, as far as being sued by the government, I would have never believed unless it had actually happened to me. But it actually, they had, there's, a, there's a law in the books that says you're not allowed to write or publish the words Social Security. Now, of course, the, the Social Security Administration doesn't sue every newspaper that, that prints those words. They don't sue every media outlet for using those words. They just go after the folks who they don't like. So if you spill their secrets, they're going to come after you, and that's what they're doing to me right now. But they're already going to destroy our society to begin with, so this is just survival instinct. We've got to do what we're doing. Just like the Alamo, we just got to stand up, and that's the end of it. And they may get us, but they're not going to get everybody else, because people are going to say, remember Alex Jones, remember Porter Stansbury, remember <laughs> the Alamo. Well, you know... It does get tiresome to have a big target on your back, though, doesn't it? I mean, so why not I, just go with it? Why not just love it then? I mean, are you? I mean, come on. This is the United States of America. You can't actually sue me for writing a report, can you? Oh, yes, you can, because it's a, it's a myth. The, the whole idea that we're free is completely a myth. And I know that you and I we talk about this all the time and to our various audiences. And you know, I think a lot of times people think that we're a little off base until they start getting into the facts. And so they start seeing what's actually going on and right there in front of us. Let me stop you with the dirty tricks. This is just breaking huge on the Drudge Report. It's also going up on Infowars.com. ABC News, National ABC. Wisconsin governor pranked by reporter posing as a billionaire conservative activist. Walker reveals plans to break Democratic Union opposition on call with billionaire uh, David Koch. And, and, uh, our Coke, and, and then it goes on. The prankster pretending, uh, to be the billionaire also asked Walker whether troublemakers should be planted in the protest, presumably to discredit their efforts. Walker reveals that he and his aides had thought about that, but decided against it. My only fear would be that if there was a ruckus cause that would uh, scare the public into thinking that maybe the governor's got to settle to avoid all these problems, Walker said. So there's gover the governor reportedly 
is saying he'd already entertained provocateurs. Well, the Democrats have been caught all over the country with violent provocateurs posing as Tea Party people. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, what's, you know, the thing that I'm curious about is, and I, and, I, and I hope that you'll think about this as well, is it doesn't make any difference whether the governor um, forces the, the unions to back off or not. It doesn't make any difference because Wisconsin is facing a two billion dollar deficit so it doesn't even matter who's in the governor's office the government the, the state of wisconsin is broke so all these guys are doing is they're fighting over a bunch of crumbs it doesn't make any difference yeah the titanic has already hit the iceberg and they're fighting over silverware on the deck stay there when we come back i want to talk about these uh Wall Street Journal reports and others that are saying 42 states are already essentially bankrupt. The feds are preparing to take them into receivership, but the feds are bankrupt. It's a shell game. Well, Porter Stansbury is being persecuted for telling the truth, and so is anybody else prominently and effectively and successfully fighting the globalists. And we've only got two more segments with him, and Lindsey Williams is coming on. If you want to see the free video that the government's trying to censor, end of America, the number three dot com. Check it out today and send the link out to everybody you know. We want to make it the number one search term, end of America, the number three dot com. Again, that's end of America, number three dot com, secondary search term, end game, the movie dot com. See how the globalists like that. They can watch my film for free as well. Now, now, Porter, just briefly burning up time here. I, I wish I wasn't. and I want to get you back soon. I know you're very busy. But my grandmother two years ago, she lives in a very humble home in South Austin, lived there for 20 plus years. My grandfather's dead. Uh, she is, you know, doing okay, but quite frankly, I've had to give her a little bit of money over the years just to, for groceries. I guess that's not doing okay. Uh, and my dad helps out as well. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's my mom's mother, sweetheart. She's on my only grandmother I got left, 80, 87 years old now. Uh, and just incredible. But th they, they tried to come and take her social security and, and, and make her fill out forms and harass her. So they're running normal people out of social security that paid into it. You dis uh, discovered an inside deal that federal employees were doing. You told folks from 96 to, t to, t to 2010. And when people found out about it and started using it, they got rid of the program. That's why federal employees are so mad at you. Ex explain what you explained to me during the break. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you got the dates a little bit wrong, but uh, in 2006, one of my researchers found a loophole in Social Security that would allow you to increase your benefits. You know that if you start taking benefits when you're 62, they'll start paying you out, but it's at a decreased level. Or you can wait until 65 and you get the full level, right? You, you know that's how it works. Well, we found that there was an actual loophole that you had to know about. You could just call up Social Security when you turn 65, and you could fill out some forms, and then you would automatically be getting this higher level. And we started publishing this as a report. And the report says, you know, in big, bold letters, we are not the Social Security Department. We are an independent research company. This is our report about how to get a higher level of Social Security. It was simple. It was, it was totally, there was no allegation that we, that we weren't telling the truth. There was no allegation of fraud. It was a, a, an actual thing that you could do. And we had thousands of satisfied customers who did it. Well, we had so many people that did it. In 2010, they eliminated the program. And now today, they're suing us for writing it. And they're saying you're not allowed to tell people what's going on with their Social Security. Think about the magnitude of that. This is Orwellian. It really is. There's actually a law that was passed in the 1960s that makes it against the law to publish the words Social Security. You're not allowed to write those words. They're forbidden words. Only in America. <laughs> where, you're, where you're free and where you have First Amendment rights. But again, they're mad because you ended the little secret loophole they'd written for themselves. That, that is exactly what happened. Then you can talk to, you know, you can talk to, not, not, don't, you have to take it from me, you can talk to anybody associated with the program, and they'll tell you that's exactly what happened. Well, I remember the buzz on that by 2008 or so with your work on it. I remember people learning about it, and then I remember being in the news when they got rid of it. People got mad, and again, that's why they can't allow this free open Internet any longer. Are, are you concerned they're going to try to shut the web down during crises? Oh, I think that's exactly what they're going to do. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the whole point of the switch. I think it's going to be very interesting to see if technically they can do it, because the Internet was actually designed to withstand a nuclear attack. That, that's the whole way it's structured, so that any individual node can continue to function. There is no Well, that's what cybersecurity is, though, is they're putting their machines in all of the routers, so they can, they're changing the nature of it. 
I understand that. I understand that. Uh, but I'm telling you, I think it's going to be interesting to see if they can pull it off because I don't think it's really possible. I think they can definitely impact most Americans' ability to get on the Internet. But I don't think they can shut down the entire Internet. Oh, Porter, Porter, d- don't get me wrong. I totally agree with you. You're absolutely right. Look at Egypt. After four or five days, they had to turn it back on because it made commerce totally come to a halt. That's exactly. the main reason they can't do it. Back in one minute with five-minute summation of other key info and ideas you've got and proven track record for folks who try to protect themselves, stansburyresearch.com. Our guest website is America number 3com Porter, we got five minutes left. Uh, other key points you'd like to relay to the audience. Uh, you know, the most important thing for me, Alex, is that people take the time. You know, set aside ten minutes today. Go to endofamerica3.com. Look at my presentation. It's free. Judge it for yourself. Don't rely on on what I've said or what you hear from Alex. Make your own decision about what's best for you and your family. Then, if you agree that there is a problem and it's going to get worse, then take reasonable steps to protect yourself. I'm not telling everybody, you know, go go bury yourself in a cave or anything like that. I'm saying buy some gold, buy some silver. Have a, have a strategic stockpile of goods in your home. Things like medicines that you can't live without, uh, some basic food, some basic uh, uh, fresh water, that kind of stuff. You know, guns, ammunition. The, the basic things that you would need to protect yourself and your family if there was a period of time where the social order was breaking down. And again, I, I, I will tell, I'll tell you straight up, Alex, I don't think that it's likely that you're going to have a violent confrontation in most places in America. But I do think it's likely that you will have violent confrontations somewhere in the country this year. So, Well, let me call them. them. Let me call them. Places like Detroit, Los Absolutely. Angeles, Chicago, Absolutely. New York, Miami, Houston. You know, people think that rioting about food is, is only going to happen in places like Pakistan and Egypt. But you're forgetting there are more than 40 million Americans on food stamps. <laughs> and the purchasing power of food stamps is going to collapse because of inflation. It's, it's about to hit 44 mil. Yeah. Well, what do you think those people, you, you know who these people are, what do you think they're going to do when they can't go out and get their, their milk and their cigarettes and their lottery tickets? Yeah, when they can't get their Pabst Blue Ribbon or their, or their drugs, uh, it's going to turn into absolute burning bedlam. Yeah, and, and, and they're going to, of course, they're going to they're gonna blame it all on, on the likely suspects. They're going to blame it on the speculators. They're going to blame it on, on uh, you know, middle-class Americans who, who are now going to be seen as hoarders, right? So if you've gone and bought gold and silver, you're now a hoarder, and you're causing the inflation. When, of course, it was the paper money to start with. Well, they're going to say, you didn't give the people more welfare. You, you, you cut things. You caused it. When it's a debt black hole, a lot of economists I have on, even the Washington Post says 600 and something trillion. Other economists say 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives, layered debt. I mean, from your research, what's the real amount of derivatives floating around out there? Uh, the, the number is uh, astronomical. I, I don't even have that number at the top of my head. But, I mean, the... the the, you know, one good way to think about it is just to think about how levered Fannie and, and uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are. Okay, these are the largest mortgage firms in, in the world. They hold something like six trillion dollars worth of mortgages, and guess what? They're bankrupt. There is no equity underlying any of that debt. Whatsoever. And those six trillion have all been sold over and over again into the market, and then leveraged again, and then insurance bought on them to the moon. Right. I mean, and, and they, uh, you know, if you added if you added the true liabilities of Fannie and Freddie onto the national debt, which is what you should do because it's, they're now completely wards of the state, then all of a sudden the national debt goes from fourteen trillion all the way to twenty trillion, and we're way over a hundred percent of GDP in debt. We're in so much debt, as I've explained, we can't even finance it. And as a result, the only way to make the ends meet is printing money, which is how I know they're not going to stop and how I know the inflation is going to get a lot worse. Technically, is it accurate that a lot of analysts say we're worse off than Greece and uh, and, and Spain? No, that's, there's no doubt about it. We Total debt, all public and private, in the United States is around 400% of GDP. That's the same level that Iceland had when Iceland collapsed by 90%. Unbelievable, and it's only going to get worse. Well, at least we're here warning people and getting demonized for it. End of America, the number three dot com. Porter, I know that baby's coming soon, but I look forward to having you back up. God bless you, and let me say bye to you in the break, but I appreciate you coming on.